So 19-year-old Kevin Lisby, born in nearby Hackney, gets his chance. He's one of eight players in the starting 11 who appeared in the Premiership two years ago. Only captain Richard Edgehill was in the City side in their last Premiership season. In addition to Ware and Wanchop, they've acquired defender Steve Howey from Newcastle and Norwegian midfielder Alfie Holland from Leeds. Today's team also includes an Australian, Danny Tiato, and a Dutchman, Gerard Weekins, and Joe Royal hopes to complete the signing of Paul Ritchie from Rangers early next week. And before the kickoff at the Valley, a minute's silence in memory of 17-year-old Pierre Belangi, the Charlton junior player who was tragically drowned in an accident last week. Charlton have 18,000 season ticket holders, so there are just 2,000 fans here from Manchester City, and they include the well-known face there of Noel Gallagher, and his brother Liam, also, of course, from Oasis, is somewhere in that crowd as well. Referee Rob Harris gets the Premiership season started in South East London in bright sunshine on a perfect playing surface prepared by groundsman Colin Powell here especially when you consider it shared now with a rugby league club, the Valley. And it's a free kick all ready to Charlton. And uh, the man to watch for here possibly is the new man, Klaus Jensen, who scored from here last week in a testimonial match. City have got three in the wall. And it's left for Jensen. Oh, what a start it might have been. And a fine save as well by Nicky Weaver who's looking to enhance his growing reputation this season in top class. And he starts well here, the goalkeeper. That's a real curler from Jensen, turned over for a corner. Rupert stays forward here for Charlton. And Weaver comes in the crowd, and what an excellent opening for him. really was a fine save from the free kick by a man who's played already for England under 21s. George Ware up. And again. Quite a character, the former World Footballer of the Year. Quite apart from his uh, football exploits, which have been considerable, he works hard for UNICEF, doing some valuable work back in his own country for traumatised children of the war and that's a free kick over on the far side that's Tyler oh now is he offside Lisby oh he's missed it he's hit the frame of the goal when he should surely have scored and the flag stayed down that's in again by Tyler what an opportunity for Charlton to open their account and a second let off for City as Kennedy breaks on their left Kevin Lisby at 19 had a wonderful opportunity here he got the ball down well the flag stays down you'll notice he hits the bar Charlton have made the strongest start here. This is Powell. Jensen. Good running by Hunt. Oh, he's onside as well. It's Andy Hunt. Chance again. Goal! Moment of jubilation for Charlton and their supporters. The first goal of the season at the Valley in the Premiership. And it's last season's top scorer, Andy Hunt. And the curious thing is, well, he took, takes this really well. He's onside, City caught out again, square, comes inside too and fires it in. 
Last season, Hunt scored 24 league goals, but only six of them were here at the Valley. He intends to change the ratio this year, and that's a good start. And for Alan Kirbishley, the sort of opening he'd be hoping for. This is Kennedy for City, up against Kishishev. That's going to be their first corner. Oh, and here's George Ware. But he was uh, beaten to it, and Charlton break away here with four, five of them coming. Robinson on the ball, finds Lisby. They've got players to spare Charlton. It's Powell. If he can get a deep cross in here, there's a real chance. Pulled it short to Robinson. Corner. difficult there for uh, <laughs> the players on the left to see what a good run one or two had made on the far side oh and there's a chance for Lisby got in ahead of the tournament well it wasn't a bad effort good save again by Nicky Weaver A long throw Alfie Holland has and uh, Spencer Pryor has gone up just in front of uh, George Ware oh and there is a chance indeed for one chop and it comes from the nearest city of Bean Paolo one chop close to opening his account it's the long throw from Alfinger Holland that really causes the trouble here for Charlton the flick on and one shot there, what a good save. I think that's a hand onto the post from Dean Kiley. Excellent save. Danger not over yet, though. And oh, that was Kevin Horlock. And we've had a breathless opening 20 minutes here at the Valley. takes on Holland forces the corner for Charlton Jensen and Rufus coming in oh that could so easily have been 2-0 Richard Rufus He stayed up after the corner, and when the ball was returned by Jensen, oh, Weaver came, didn't make it. And the header from the Charlton centre-back goes wide. It's a flick on by Lisby to Hunt. Oh, it's a good return as well. And Lisby has broken through here for Charlton. Can he make it too? No, he can't. Weaver's foot, and now Robinson, and Weaver's foot again, and a goal! And John Robinson has made it 2-0, and Nicky Weaver, having saved with his foot once, couldn't do it the second time. More joy on the Charlton faces, and Kevin Lisby initially here makes the break, beautifully set up by Andy Hunt, it should be said, but Lisby here goes on himself, Nicky Weaver saves with his right foot, and then when the ball comes out to Robinson, the goalkeeper tries to do the same again and misses it. So John Robinson, Charlton's most capped player in their history, 22 times for Wales, scores the second goal. mistake and how and the referee blows for half time and a roar goes up round the valley the team who are without five strikers through injury have struck twice first through Andy Hunt who had a marvellous half and helped to make the second goal for John Robinson City had a couple of moments in between but by and large it was Charlton's half in the battle of the two promoted clubs they lead 2-0
Charlton are clever looking to the future and in their sights literally they've got the Millennium Dome just by the Thames there and also the Thames flood barrier which is uh, within sight of the valley and uh, shortly they'll be extending the stand at that end and perhaps the view won't be quite as good but it will increase the capacity here to 26,000. 18 year old Sean Wright Phillips is the adopted son of Ian Wright made a name for himself last season and also in the Dennis Irwin testimonial on Wednesday he's now on for Manchester City in place of Kevin Horlock and having made the substitution City will be looking for more penetration down the right hand side in the second half and probably better service for one shop and where it's really the difference between the two teams uh, in the opening period Here's one shot now, picking it up from where? He's an unpredictable character, Paolo one shot. Didn't quite get the goals at West Ham that he once got at Derby. This is Lisby. Oh, he did that really well. Stewart! And still free! And Lisby! And a goal kick. Well, Kevin Lisby is quite a threat here. He's taking on Edgehill and Howie in the same movement. Flicks it back away from Beacons, and it needed a good challenge there by Holland to stop Stewart. I should think he's terribly thrilled so far, and neither is he. Kishishev. And now Jensen, Lisby wants it played through, it's gone in fact to Stewart, who is onside, hunts underneath this, on the bar, oh and Lisby, oh and not off the bar again, surely Nicky Weaver got a hand to the first one I think, Charlton so close to number three but at the other end it's Wright Phillips, and he's put Kennedy in for City, still Kennedy, cross was too long, and the Charlton fans still asking themselves how those two stayed out. It's Lisby again. Kinsella well forward. Stewart on the run. And back in again to Kinsella. And that one has got him. It's 3-0. And the captain, Mark Kinsella, scores with a perfectly placed shot. And Charlton get the reward that their early attack deserved. It's pulled back to him by Graham Stewart, and talk about pick your spot. That is perfection from Mark Kinsella. Steered it almost with the outside of the right foot. What a classic piece of technique this is. Goalkeeper and defenders can only watch. And the valley has erupted. Oh, no flag! Kinsler signaled to the assistant referee, and he was right, and he's got brought down by Weaver. Penalty! And Nicky Weaver's in trouble. Referee's calling him across. The goalkeeper who brought Kinsler down. Did you see the gesture from Kinsler to the assistant referee? No, no, I'm not offside. He had time to do that. And a yellow card for the goalkeeper for bringing down the Charlton captain inside the area. This looked as though it was going to be 4-0. Well, there's definite contact. And uh, Graham Stewart has put the ball on the spot. He will take the penalty. It's four! Number four from number four. Well, what an afternoon they're having here. These 18,000 Charlton season ticket holders get value for money on day one. Graham Stewart tucks away the penalty. And this has now become something of a rout. Well, 
Well, they've both been promoted from Division 1 to the Premiership, but on today's showing, City don't seem to belong to the same league as Charlton. Tyler. Newton just muscled out of it a little bit there, as indeed was Powell. Leading there, so too Tyler by one shot. Where? First time, City their own worst enemies. This is Newton for Charlton. Referee Rob Harris gives the final signal. Alan Kirbishley starting his 10th year as Charlton manager. Couldn't wish for a better start to that and to the Premiership campaign. His team did him proud and nobody more so than Mark Kinsler who emphasised that he is a Premiership player of some class in midfield and leads Charlton to a sparkling opening day performance. Comprehensive winners, the examiner would say, highly promising to them, but the report on City would have to be, must do much better. And the meeting between the promoted sides ends, Charlton Athletic 4, Manchester City 0. I just felt it fell into place for us today, Garth, to be fair. You know, we scored very early on. And then I think Dean made a great save and pushed it onto the post. We then went and made it two. And at half time, you know, we had a chat about it and, and it was either gonna end up that we scored some more or it was gonna be quite a close game because I think the way the game was, it was quite end to end. And uh, we managed to hit Man City on a break. And, you know, we got our extra goals and perhaps could have got a few more. Well, Joe, that looked like a baptism of fire. <laughs> yeah, you could say that, but uh, we didn't help ourselves. You know, we, we, we passed the ball very poorly at times first half. And we did improve a little uh, second half, but our defending as a team, not just our back four, wasn't good today. And the goals from their point of view are great, but uh, defensively, the, the first goal particularly is a nonsense. With uh, two centre-halves sliding into each other and another full-back around, three to one, and the fella gets his shot in. So we were very disappointed in the goals we conceded, but uh, we'll start again Monday. A word about Kevin Lisby. Um, Great enthusiasm. Yeah, he, uh, he, he was on his whole Thursday or Friday that was playing with uh, JJ getting uh, injured. And they, he was outstanding for us today. He, he, you know, he tore their defence to bits, really, and uh, deserved a goal in the end of it. It's, it's a lovely place to play football. Um, there's a lot of very nice people here. But, uh, you know, nice people don't necessarily win football games. And, uh, you know, we've perhaps learned that from a couple of years ago where we've decided we need to be a hell of a lot stronger as a club as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at least it showed on the first day anyway. A lot of judges said before the start of the season that they thought perhaps Man City were the best equipped of the three promoted clubs to cope with Premiership football, but it looked more like Charlton will be today. Yeah, I think, I mean, Manchester, you can never perhaps judge too much opening Saturday. We always get a few weird results, but I mean, they played poorly. I think they're at, at home with the, you know, the fans, at, at, you know, at Main Road. I mean, we and One Shop didn't get any service today, and I think that's the problem. But uh, let's give credit to Charlton. I mean, they've... You know, they started brightly, they, they nearly scored from the free kick, uh, had a couple of chances, then scored and, and actually you know, got four, but it could have been more, it was that sort of game, then certainly they, they deserved the win. Yeah, they did get four, but you've, you've picked out a striker that failed to find the net. <laughs> yeah, as a young lad, you've got to give him a chance. I mean, he was bright and quick, because last time they were in the Premiership, I mean, they didn't score enough goals and they didn't really have the pace up front. And I, I thought Kevin Lisbeth today did very, very well. I mean, you know, early on... When the ball was clipped in here, uh, he, he actually sort of turns a marker. I mean, he's bright, energetic, enthusiastic. He's got his chance here in the Premiership. He, he actually marked tightly on the edge of the area. He comes over his head and he turns. Perhaps I'll get a knockdown. He goes out. He has a quick look. Make sure I'm going to stay onside. He certainly is onside. His first touch then anticipating that was good. I mean, he should have tucked it in and he's frustrated but he was always with his pace running along the line causing them problems there he is on the right of the picture you know they're they're flat Manchester City as they often were but his pace takes him out and he, he's quite keen to take people on which is great because you know if you've got a striker a young striker like that coming into the box they don't want to sort of die up and get the penalty and, and really in the end it's just standing foot gets taken from him and he, he could have again had another goal 
But uh, here, good awareness, lets the ball run, gain his pace. It's not the best on his left side, and he just dwells a little bit uh, and how he comes in and gets the block. And in the end, of course, he, he, he should have got this one. Um, but reacts, look how he reacts. Swivels, hits the inside of the post, and he probably thinks to himself, well, you know, I am not going to score. But he, he does well, because I think that about four or five strikers unavailable today. So, mm. you know, got his chance, and, and good luck to him. I suppose Manchester City can take some heart from the fact that um, last season, Sunderland lost on the opening day of the season 4-0 against Chelsea and they did okay but they're gonna to have to sort out that defense aren't they? The defense was poor I mean I mean Joe mentioned you know it's not just the back four as everyone defended but the back four was was so square I mean really Andy Hunt's goal he, he said I mean you know when when the ball is clipped through from Jensen I mean you, you've got Richard Hedgerill the right back and then Spencer Pryor the central defender who, who's actually marking Andy Hunt now you see as the ball's plucked he moves up Hedgerill moves back I mean he's definitely onside they then come back to try and make the tackle. They run into each other, and, and then, you know, he, he gets in at the near post there. So it is a bad goal. Uh, again, you know, really, this is the midfield. It's not forward. Um, where's the, the runners from midfield? Now, Jensen, if the ball is knocked in by Lisby, is clear. But in fact, Lisby thinks it's all, well, I think I can run these because they're so flat. Uh, and actually, we've initially done well, but of course, then it came out to Robinson, who, who tucked the rebound in. Uh, but I think. You know, this is again Robinson. You think, oh, he's offside. But look, Spencer Pryor and mm -hmm. Tatio, this side, are, are, are both played him on. So they're outnumbered, and actually they try to walk the, the ball in then, and, and they get away with it. But right then, late on, uh, in, in, you know, this is the penalty decision. Kinsella making the run this side, and look over the other side there. Yeah. Howie and Edgell both playing him on. I mean, they're not working as a union, and, and you know, that was, was all afternoon. And I think. All right, Steve Howey arrived a bit late, Paul Ridge has just arrived, mm. but as a unit, the back four have got to get that work going together, and, and certainly otherwise they're going to be exposed. You know, people running from deep in the Premiership all the time. I wonder what George Ware was thinking at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we raise that from the memory, I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be all right on the night, he said.